everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm excited to share some suggested reading for May. I love to read seasonally and I've had a lot of fun pulling together a few books that I think would make a great reading list for this month. So let's dive in and get started. First of all, of course, I have to mention the Comfort Book Club choice for May. I host the Comfort Book Club, a YouTube book club with my mum Donna and May's reading choice is Emma by Jane Austen. I'm so excited to be doing this, Jane Austen is my favourite writer, we haven't done one of her books for the Comfort Book Club yet, Emma's a particular favourite so I really can't wait to read this and although it goes all through the seasons, to me it's always been a very sort of late spring, early summer read. So I really can't wait to get to this this month and reread it for the millionth time. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to discussing it with all of you. If you want information about the Comfort Book Club and how you can join in, then just see the link below in the description box. Now, I just recently reread The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery, and this is a fantastic choice for May. I so enjoyed returning to this book. It starts on a rainy, wet May day, and we've been having pretty inclement weather in May so far. We have had some sunshine and been lucky, but it's also been quite cold and often rainy <laughs> already. And in this book, it starts with a very sort of rainy, rather cold May in Canada. I really love this story. If you're a fan of Anne of Green Gables and the Emily books, then you definitely have to give The Blue Castle a try. I mean, it's billed as a sort of YA novel, but in some ways, to me, it reads a bit more of an adult story, an adult romance by Ellen Montgomery. The heroine is much older. She's in her late 20s. Her name is Valency Sterling, and she's had a very unhappy life. When you first meet her, she's feeling very sorry for herself. She's always wanted to be able to get married and leave home where she lives with a very tyrannical mother and she's really been under the thumb of all of her family, all her numerous aunts and cousins and uncles have bossed Valency around like mad and she's never really been able to have her own thoughts or passions or express her opinions and she realises, when she wakes up on this May morning, and it's her birthday, she realises how miserable she is. But that day changes her life. She gets a letter from the doctor that she visits, and in this letter he tells her that she only has a year left to live. Valancy realises that she's never properly lived before, and that's now what she wants to do. She doesn't care who she offends, what she does, she wants to be happy and she's going to go out there and sort of grasp happiness with two hands and live this last year of her life to the maximum. And that's what she does with hilarious consequences, the reactions of her very stuffy relatives to what Valancy chooses to do is so funny and it's the most wonderful character development. I think as the reader you're just really cheering Valancy on. You love to see her gain confidence and spirit and speak her mind to people um, but she also just really seizes life and she ends up having so many of her dreams come true before she'd only ever been able to have fun in her fantasy world of her blue castle. But in this year, she finds her real blue castle and her real chance at happiness. I won't spoil the ending for you, but I so recommend this and it's a great book to pick up in May. There's some beautiful nature writing, as always with Ella Montgomery, and it goes all through the year, but the first part of the book is really concentrated on May and June. So it's a lovely one to have a read of um, this month. 
And then if you read The Enchanted April with us for the, com for the Comfort Book Club, I've got a few recommendations of Elizabeth Von Arnhem books. Um, she was the author of The Enchanted April. And I've got a few recommendations of books by her that start in May. So would make excellent follow-up reads from The Enchanted April. Or even if you haven't read The Enchanted April, then do read these books. I think they're brilliant. So the first one is Elizabeth and Her German Garden by Elizabeth von Arnhem. This is quite an autobiographical account of the author's life. It is fictionalised a bit but it's also really a lot about her own life living on the Pomeranian estate of her first husband and her own burgeoning love for gardens and gardening and it's written a bit in diary form and the first entry is May 7th which is tomorrow so this would be a great book to pick up in May and enjoy. I love all of the descriptions of the garden, Elizabeth von Arnhem is such a lyrical writer and her nature writing is definitely one of her greatest strengths but this book goes all through the year and there are some very, very funny moments. It's very witty and I thoroughly recommend it. And then a sort of companion read to Elizabeth and her German garden is The Solitary Summer. This also starts in May and it goes through to September. I think the first entry is May first in this one again it's written in diary form it's May 2nd that it starts on so another really lovely book to pick up this month and they're both really very slim reads so you can read these quickly too and then a final Elizabeth von Arnhem book is The Jasmine Farm sadly this one's no longer in print but I really recommend looking out for a second-hand copy I've been reading this myself and I absolutely love the opening scenes. It's It opens on the weekend before Whitsuntide, so that would normally be around the end of May. And there's the most hilarious account of a country house party and this lunch that goes terribly wrong. There's a heat wave, very unusual for the time of year, so the guests are very sort of hot and disgruntled. But what makes it worse is that their hostess, who's normally uh, very gracious and um, very aware of all of the needs and comforts of her guests, is incredibly distracted for some reason this weekend, and she's allowing her cook to sort of cook whatever he wants and he keeps serving gooseberries which are not ripe yet in May and the poor guests <laughs> become increasingly more uncomfortable <laughs> as they go through this weekend eating more and more unripe gooseberries turning up in tarts and pies and souffles and ices <laughs> and by the time it's a Sunday lunch when this story opens the guests are all in a foul temper working their way through this gooseberry pie all feeling a horrible ache in their stomachs and it's just absolutely brilliant it's one of my favorite sort of dinner party scenes in a in a country house setting it's really good and Elizabeth von Arnhem is always so funny but this was a really brilliant opening and yeah definitely May is not a good time to eat gooseberries so I feel for them they're quite sharp anyway I think even when they are ripe so I really enjoyed this opening but why the hostess Daisy is so distracted too is that she um, has discovered that her daughter is having an affair with a married man. Daisy sort of flees to her Jasmine farm in the French Riviera but there she's followed out by Mumsy who is the mother of um, the wife of the man with whom Daisy's daughter is having an affair. Anyway so far I'm really enjoying this and yeah it's making a really fun read for May. And then 
Another book that is not set entirely in May, but a very significant happening <laughs> occurs in May, is The Hopkins Manuscript by R.C. Sheriff. I first read this in September 2020 and I raved about it at the time on my YouTube channel. I thought this was an amazing book. You might be familiar with The Fortnight in September by R.C. Sheriff. I know that's a favourite book with many of you, it's one of um, the best-selling Persephone books. This is another Persephone book and they've republished the Hop Hopkins manuscript by him, which is very different from The Fortnight in September. Um, it's a science fiction for one thing and it's set in about 1939 and it's about the world hearing of the news that the moon has somehow gone out of its usual orbit and is plummeting towards the earth and that this essentially means the end of humankind and one man is told about this earlier than most other people he's the narrator of the story and he's a very well, arrogant, not particularly likeable character at all. He's really a very lonely person and although he thinks he has the gift of getting on with everybody and is liked by everyone, that is in fact not true at all and as the reader you realise that. Um, but he himself is sort of entirely oblivious to his own shortcomings. The date that the moon is meant to hit the earth is sometime in May. So that's why I'm actually rereading this book at the moment and that's why I think it would be quite a good one to pick up in May. Um, a catastrophe does indeed happen and what makes this one of my favourite stories is how, is how you see the growing humanity of the narrator even when faced with utter despair. It's really poignant it reminds me a little bit of books like The Remains of the Day and in fact Ishiguro has written about R.C. Sheriff being an inspiration on his own writing, particularly with the book The Fortnight in September, but I also see some similarities between some of Ishiguro's books and the narrator in the Hopkins manuscript. So definitely a book that I recommend giving a try. I mean, science fiction is not my normal genre at all, but I absolutely loved this and I found it a really poignant read. So a great one to pick up at some point, if not this month. And then another Persephone book that I think I'll be putting on my bedtime, uh, on my bedside table. I just got this one actually in the post and it's Gardener's Choice by Evelyn Dunbar and Charles Mahoney. It's got absolutely beautiful end papers, this one, um, with the bookmark too. And it has lovely illustrations inside as well. I would say this is a real book for gardeners. It talks about specific plants and the benefits of growing them, essentially, the sort of author's favourites to have in your garden. So it's quite technical, but it still is very readable. This month I'm really going to be out in the garden a lot more. I've been doing some massive weeding sessions. I want to buy a few more pots and plants and this afternoon I'm hoping I have a delivery arriving of a little table and chairs to keep outside. So I'm excited to be spending more time in the garden this month and all over summer. So a bit of garden reading seems appropriate and like I said this one is definitely a book for gardeners and it is quite technical but dipping into it already it just is highly readable and entertaining and I really love the illustrations in it already so I'm really pleased to have got this one and then if you want a novel about gardeners and gardening then Old Herbaceous is one of my favourites I've spoken about this on my YouTube channel before and I think May is a lovely month to pick up this book. It's 
really its focus is really is on one garden and one gardener in particular um and it goes from sort of victorian times right up um through world war Two, so it spans a very changing era and how much one man's life is affected um, by all the events that span that time but how his love for the garden never diminishes it's a really touching sweet story and a lovely book to sit out hopefully in the sunshine and enjoy your garden and read this book um, it's definitely one to enjoy in the sunshine if you can and again a very slim read so one you can get through quickly which is always nice as there are of course a few bank holiday weekends in May we've already had one but there's another coming up and if you want a bit of inspiration for what to read on a sort of lazy bank holiday afternoon then this would make a lovely choice and then a real classic too of course is the darling buds of may by h.e bates i don't know if any of you ever saw the television show with Catherine zeta jones very very young in it but i grew up watching that show and i absolutely loved it and when i was a bit older i read the books by h.e bates and if you've never read the books i so recommend them um they're just as full of joy and laughter and fun as the tv series was and the darling buds of may is the first in the series that introduce introduces you to the larkin family and their farm in Kent um, it's set in post-world war ii Britain but it's just a really fun story and H.E. Bates is again one of my favorite nature writers his descriptions of the British countryside are absolutely beautiful and this makes a lovely read for this time of year then Daphne du Maurier was born in May, May 13th, I think, I think in 1907. And I think some people are sort of doing a bit of a readathon of her books um, to celebrate her birthday. And I thought it would be fun for me to read one of her books I've never read before. And I've never read The Flight of the Falcon by her and it's set in Italy which sounds wonderful and it just I don't know what it will be like I mean I think some of her books vary in quality a bit but in general I do really enjoy her writing and I'm definitely intrigued to read this one it's been sitting on my shelf for a while so I'm excited to read it one of my very favorites by her is my cousin Rachel so if you've never read that then I really recommend reading that one if you want to also sort of celebrate her birthday read a bit of Du Maurier in May then definitely read my cousin Rachel if you've never read that before it it really blew me away the first time I read it it's the sort of book that you want to talk about with everyone you know because people have very different ideas on the characters in that book and what is really going on so it's just a really great one to read and discuss with others but i'm excited to read one of hers that i've never read before so i'm going to get to this in may myself and then a children's book or a vintage children's book but it's been republished by the elsie j oxenham society and that's girls of the hamlet club by elsie oxenham um I loved the series of books called The Abbey Girl Books by Elsie Oxenham when I was growing up. They were written a very, very long time ago in the sort of early 1900s. But I really enjoyed collecting and reading these books when I was little. And I recently reread Girls of the Hamlet Club and I so enjoyed returning to it. It's the very first book in the Abbey Girl series and it's extremely rare to find, which is why it's great that it has been republished and is available as a paperback edition. It actually starts in October, but the reason why I think it's a great choice for May is because it's all about country traditions especially those 
revolving around May Day and May dances and the crowning of a May Queen. The book is about a young girl called Cicely Hobart who moves to the Chilterns, I think, it's set in in the UK, um, to live with some elderly relatives and she starts to attend the local school and she realises that the school is divided between girls who are real snobs and very much keep to themselves and have school clubs that they really only allow themselves to join because they put a membership a membership fee that's quite high to get into these school clubs so they're like the theatre club the writing club all that sort of thing and that virtually excludes all of the other girls who come from neighbouring hamlets in the area who are the daughters of farmers for instance and who don't have the money to be able to join these typical school clubs and they're really ostracised by these snobbish girls who make up a large proportion of the school. Now, Cicely is very wealthy and she would definitely be invited into the snobby circle, but she's sort of appalled by this situation at the school and she herself befriends the girls who are from the neighbouring hamlets who are really lovely girls and she is much more willing to be friends with them. She thinks how unfair it is that they don't have their own club so she forms the Hamlet Club for them and in this club they learn to do a lot of folk dancing and it ends with them having a wonderful sort of May Day scene and they do a lot of country folk dancing, dancing around the maypole and crowning the first May Queen. And it's really a very charming story and these books are actually what got me very interested in folk songs and English country dancing and some of those British country customs even when I was little. And I, I still find it fascinating to read about uh, all of that now too. But this is just quite a charming story and I think a nice choice for May. So that was one I wanted to recommend. And then I had three non-fiction books that I thought I'd recommend for this month. So if you want to read a biography of Daphne du Maurier, then I really recommend this one. Manderly Forever by Tatiana de Ronne. and this was a really readable biography of Daphne du Maurier's life. I so enjoyed this, I read it when it first came out which is a few years ago now but I found it utterly absorbing and so interesting. Tatiana de Ronne really went to all of the locations that were important um, to Daphne du Maurier, a lot in Cornwall of course, and she really managed to bring her to life for me. So I so I so recommend giving this one a read. This edition is very special to me because I got it signed by Tatiana de Ronne. I interviewed her in fact about this book and I went to a special event and book signing she did. And then um, Daphne de, Maur de Maurier's daughter uh, Tessa was there and Tatiana asked Tessa to sign the book for me too so I have her signature down here as well which makes this edition very very special to me but yes I really enjoyed this biography so I definitely recommend that and a fun companion if you're doing a bit of a Daphne du Maurier readathon this month. Then I just got this book in the post yesterday, I had it on pre-order and it's called Miss Wilmot's Ghosts, The Extraordinary Life and Gardens of a Forgotten Genius by Sandra Lawrence. It says, hidden in the shadows of once spectacular gardens in Essex, France and Italy, a story lies sleeping of a woman whose ferocious talent marked a path in Victorian horticultural discovery and cultivation. Much like her gardens, her reputation has been left in ruins, her achievements all but forgotten. Her name was Ellen Ann Wilmot and these are her ghosts. I love the M papers in this book, I think that's really beautiful. 
But I'm very interested in reading a bit more garden history and especially about female gardeners um, from the 20th century and the late 19th century. So I'm definitely curious to read this and I hope that it will be good, but it sounds like it will be. So I'm looking forward to that. And again, so I'll be spending more time in the garden this month. This seems like an appropriate biography to pick up. And then as the weather is getting nicer, we all want to get out walking a lot more too and enjoying the English countryside, at least for me. And so this is another new biography that I'm particularly interested in. It's a sort of group biography and it's The Women Who Saved the English Countryside by Matthew Kelly. Of course, Beatrix Potter features in here, but um, there are also a few other women. So Octavia Hill, Beatrix Potter, Pauline Dower and Sylvia Say Sayer. And so some of the women are very well known and others are much less recognized that he writes about. And I think it's such a fascinating topic that I'm really looking forward to diving into this. So I can't wait to get to that. But anyway, these are my suggestions for a May reading list. I hope you've enjoyed my choices. Let me know if any of these appeal to you in particular. I also wanted to say thank you so very much to those of you who have um, donated to my channel through Buy Me A Coffee the past couple of weeks. I so appreciate it. Um, but I'm I wanted to say that I'll probably be closing off my buy me a coffee site now because my YouTube channel has just become eligible for the thank you donation option. So this is something YouTube has been rolling out to uh, you know several well, lots of channels over the past few months. Mine has just been made eligible for it this past week. Um, which is amazing. Um, so I'm going to be using that instead of buy me a coffee because it just is a lot simpler to do. So if you look at the bottom of the video where you can do a, well, there's like a little thumbs up sign for likes or the thumbs down for dislikes. There's now also a little heart, I think with a dollar sign, um, on there as well. And that's, if you click on that, you can see that you can make a donation to the channel. If you enjoy my videos, or if you enjoy one video in particular, then you can just do it that way. So I just wanted to alert you to all of that because I'll be taking away the buy me a coffee. But of course, I also appreciated um, all of the coffees or teas <laughs> that you have got for me um, since I first launched that. Uh, so I want to say thank you very much as always for the support of this channel. It's always very much appreciated. But anyway, I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead of you. I hope you get to enjoy some lovely reading time. Let me know what you'll be reading this weekend and if it might be any of these books, that would be great. But anyway, yes, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.